Welcome back to another episode of Around the 412. I am Tyler. With me, as always, is my co-host, Smitty. Be sure to go follow us on all of our social medias, as well as go subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, let us know what you want to see down there. Also, we have some links in our, our descriptions of our shows. We've continued to push those as well, so go check those out on the listening platforms and as well as YouTube. This week, there's a lot of Penguins news. Uh, we we pushed off holding, or we held off rather, recording an episode last night. We were tempted, and we're glad we did. But joining us this week is our buddy Hunter Hodes. He's a staff writer for the Spun, as well as the host of the Locked On Penguins podcast. Hunter, what's going on, man? I mean, we were gonna uh, record maybe Tuesday, maybe last night, Wednesday, and now we're recording Thursday. Finally, happy we did because we talked about how. Kyle Dubas could be a Pittsburgh Penguin in 12 hours if we recorded yesterday. Turns out he's a Pittsburgh Penguin now, but what's going on, man? Uh, well, thank God we did not record Tuesday or Wednesday, especially Wednesday, because if we had recorded last night, that this episode would have been basically nothing. Obsolete. Yeah, it, it would have been absolutely nothing. So I'm glad we decided to wait. Patience paid off, and I think everyone's fears can be put to bed. I agree. I do want to say it's funny that you mentioned that about recording early because um, the Knicks, Berlansky and Horwat kind of fell, fell, fell into that trap because they recorded uh, before the Dubis thing and uh, now they can't talk about it until tomorrow's episode. So LOL at you guys. Uh, but yeah, here we are ready to talk about this Kyle Dubis news. <laughs> Very fresh in our minds. Uh, Hunter, did this process, um, I mean, I think a lot of people were kind of thrown off from start to finish with the way this process kind of played out just because it seemed like Dubis was going to be Toronto or nothing. Uh, and then he becomes available and the Penguins are like, wait a minute, scratch everything. We got to talk to this guy. Um, what was your thought with the way that the Penguins kind of went about this process and just on the surface, you know, the hiring of Kyle Dubas? Yeah, it, honestly, you, you know, right when they it's been basically seven weeks now, I would say, because they were they were basically fired on Thursday. They it officially wasn't until Friday yeah. when they had the press conference, but it's been seven full weeks since the, the, the firings of Ron Hextall and Brian Burke and Chris Pryor. And right after that press conference, I believe it was Mike Stevens who said, I've just been hearing some rumblings that they're going to throw a huge bag of Kyle Dubas if he becomes available. And I'm like, well, here, here comes the rumor mill. And then the Leafs lose game one. And it's like, oh, okay. You might, they, they might actually let him go. But then they win a round. You see them start to do their first hundred interviews. The Penguins, they go deep into their second round. The Leafs lose in the second round. But still, they're like, he's probably going to return because they – got that monkey off their back first series win since 2004 when I was very young but then all of a sudden Brandon Shanahan had a change of heart and he decided to fire Kyle Dubas and that threw a whole wrench into the Penguins plans because it sounded like when you look at various reports and all that they were getting close to being ready to hire someone else before Dubas yeah. was made available and once they saw he was they were like okay let's just at least talk to him gauge his interest and then once it appeared that he was interested i think they were like okay we have a real shot of actually pulling this off and did it maybe take a bit longer than some wanted it to yes but in the end the patience paid off and they were able to get their guy now he's going to be the president of hockey operations he's not going to be the general manager i had heard before he was going to get both so i think something must have changed during mm -hmm. the, this whole interview process but he's here to run this whole show and he's going to be handpicking his GM. And based off that move alone and the press conference that I watched today, I learned more about hockey in 20 minutes than I did in the two years that Ron Hextall and Brian Burke ran this team. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think Kyle Dubas probably said more words in one press conference yes. than Hextall said ever as a Penguins GM. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, maybe at some point we can figure out what Brian Burke was exactly doing for the team, but that still hasn't come yet. So I still don't know what it, what he did. Yeah, um, on, owners, he showed up with a tie untied hanging around his neck and occasionally spoke to media when something happened, but I, I still don't know what value he brought to the team. Right. I do want to, like, as we go through this, try to figure out a way to tie in questions that we got when they make the most sense. So uh, Alex uh, asked us, Who's your best guest? Guess on the GM hire. I mean, we literally just talked about that. We weren't sure that that was even going to be a thing or if Dubas would take on both of those roles. They are going to hire a GM at some point. Kyle will take on that role until they do. Um, he ha do you have any ideas on how he'll approach our upcoming free agency in draft, Alex, as as well? 
the GM thing is, is very interesting. And, and I've seen a couple people bring up like he probably honestly in his mind, like knows who it is and isn't floating the name out there. It's not being announced because he doesn't want somebody to talk to them. You know, almost like a, a situation, but another person, like another organization poaching them. Is is that something that maybe you've considered or, Hunter, who are the names that like come to mind like first for you in terms of who could be the next GM? Yeah, I, I think he's going to hire someone who's honestly never had the role before. You know, you saw Steve Greeley was involved, but then he was removed this morning. He's not going to be in, in there. That would have been nice. Brown had a weird tweet about Matthew Darsh. He was apparently going to get the president of Hockey Ops role. Yeah until Dubas took the job. So that that's who it was going to go to if Dubas had said no. And then that would throw in a huge wrench into it. That would have been a big promotion for him because he's never even been a GM before. But he never said he was out of the GM running. I'd be curious to see if they would still circle back to him in terms of a GM. He's Again, he's never been a GM before. You have to look at Brandon Pridham. He is Toronto's assistant general manager, Kyle's right-hand man while he was there. Salary cap wizard. I, I think he would be very much in contention. There's Cam Lawrence. For those that are unfamiliar with him, he's based in Pittsburgh. Also follows me on Twitter, by the way. And I'll hire him. <laughs> yeah, I got to get the scoop. From him, right? <laughs> uh, he does, I believe he does work with the Columbus Blue Jackets, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And he, he, he was one of the quote unquote computer boys down in Florida. He's this chief financial officer for GNC. As That's well. right. <laughs> Which is really weird, but yeah. And yeah, yeah, and I believe he's done work for Columbus. He worked for the Florida Panthers and was very instrumental in helping them get Riley Smith, Jonathan Marchessault before they were shipped off to Vegas for some reason, and um, Verhage. He got he helped get all three of those players. So I would not be surprised if he is contention is in contention. Sam Ventura up in Buffalo. Elliot Freeman said something very interesting on his podcast about a couple of weeks ago. He said if they were going to maybe do a president of hockey operations or depending on what the structure they would do, they would look to bring in people in terms of a promotion and make someone like it a GM or make someone an assistant GM. So some of these people that they interviewed, I think are going to still be here for this. So those are some people I'm looking at right off the bat. I know people are going to say Jason Spezza. I think he's coming with him no matter what. Not I think role. it's going to be as an assistant. I don't know if it's going to be as a member of the Penguins or the Fenway Sports Group. There's a weird thing in his contract. I, I'd have to look up the tweet. Elliot Freeman had it today. So, yeah, Brandon Pridham, Cam Lauren, Sam Ventura, Matthew Darsh. There's probably going to be other names that will be interviewed. I know, saw somebody that's... mention, could Tulsi come back into the fold now that Dubas is, like, what if Dubas wanted him? Like, Tulsi was rolled out for GM before Dubas was brought in. Could Dubas maybe circle back? Yeah, I mean, I would. I mean, I would obviously be very down for that because Tolski <laughs> is ready to be yeah. a general manager in this league. He was my top choice to get the GM role overall. So I, I can see that happening. Though, you know, Kyle made a good point during the press conference today. A lot of these teams, for people that want permission, it's going to be hard during this month because you got the draft prep and you mm -hmm. have free agency. Free agency is thirty days away. So he even said he's going to do the GM duties for the next month, and then I think he's really going to dive into this try to get a gm i think around free agency or right after but it's just going to be hard to get that permission until right. after july 1 because teams are just not going to want to lose some of their top guys especially when the off season's really about to get underway for almost every team right yeah i think you'd really have to be at like carolina would really have to be doing tolski a favor there and pretty much being like yeah like if you're going to get this gm job like he better get this gm job if we're letting him do this so um, but that's also like a direct competitor within the Metro. So yeah, it's kind of a, a weird spot for them to be in too. Um, but the second part of this question, uh, is interesting in terms of like the approach for free agency in the draft. Like how could that change with Dubas's process, obviously more on the analytical side. And he was actually asked that question, like the archetype of player potentially that you're looking to add to this roster. I believe it was this guy that asked me. Dustin Brown. <laughs> Dustin Brown. <laughs> Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's who asked him the question. Not Dustin Brown. That was a clip of our friend Danny Shirey uh, who asked Kyle Dubas the question at the press conference today. Uh, but it's interesting because I think you look at the way that, like, the Leafs were filling out their bottom six as opposed to, like, obviously with the Penguins. I don't even know what the process was for Hextall and company in terms of finding those guys, if there was one. Um, yeah, they were just throwing stuff against the wall and hoping something yeah. stuck. Uh, but 
you know, so who do you like, who comes to mind for you in terms, or maybe not even a specific name, just what they could potentially be looking for in terms of free agency, but also in the draft, you know, assuming they hold on to that 14th overall pick. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at his prior history in Toronto, he, he did really good at adding cheap quality depth. Heck, even this past year, he signed Zach Aston Reese for pretty cheap. He did pretty, a pretty decent job for him. He got Noah Chari, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Zach Bogosian was fine for, for what he was at times. He was also not that good, but you know, he, he can sign good, cheap depth players. That hasn't been a problem for him. The problem for him has just been in goal. And that's the one I thought, I think I'm a little concerned about heading into this because of the, the tandem that he had this past year, but you know, and they have a lot of cap space, which is good. So, but you have to use that to your advantage. You can't just be like Ron Hextall and just give out $5 million just to, you know, to charity. Oh, sorry, my Kyle Granlin, that was a little mean, but you, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, give it to charity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I really do believe he, he'll be able to surround the core with actual quality depth. And he talked about that a lot during the yeah. press conference today talked about the defense a lot more than I expected him to. Yes. I also noticed that it seems like I, I maybe it's just me reading off this. It seems like he wants them to go out and get a number one defenseman to play with Chris Letang on the left side, at least because Brian Newman's walking Marcus Pedersen, great top four guy. I don't know if they want him giving, you know, top pairing minutes on an overnight basis. So the mm -hmm. fact that he wants to change around the back end is very interesting to me. They have a lot of guys under contract for next season. Curious to see who's going to be in who's going to be out. But in terms of his strengths, he's really good at adding to the bottom of lineups. I think he did a solid job of that in Toronto. You know, David Camp, for example, was also solid. He got Sam Lafferty in that trade. Lafferty's fine, but he, he's not like a role beater, but still some better depth than the Penguins had this past year. I, I really liked his work in Toronto with getting quality depth players that can play on cheap contracts that can chip in, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 goals a season. That's that's what you're really asking for here. Yeah. Well, Hunter, I think the best, you know, the best way to look at that too is look at the expensive contracts that he was dealing with at the top there in Toronto and still being able to supplant that mm -hmm. with what he was able to. And like you don't even have, you know, the, the talent that Pittsburgh has isn't making anywhere close to those numbers when you talk about what Sid, Gino, and Latang are. Like those are, are budget deals for the value that they're providing. So, you know, you you'd have to think like, okay, if he was able to to put together that roster in Toronto, he could definitely make some magic happen here in Pittsburgh. Now there's obviously some bad contracts on the books um, and there's a lot to, you know, of work to be done. But again, I think if you look at, you know, the roster to me from a talent perspective was never really the question. I think to your point, you know, you look at what the goaltending situation and I actually, we made a video about that. Like we, we cut out that part of yesterday, yesterday, last week's show where we kind of talked about the issues and goal and somebody commented back to us and said like, yeah, that's absolutely a fair point. But also think about just goaltending around the league in general, like those like goalies are just, you know, voodoo in general. Like you could have a guy, you know, have a, a Vezina season and then completely fall off the earth. So how much can that really be put on Dubis and how much of that is just the position in general? Yeah, I, I always say goaltending is the most volatile position out there. And, and it's yeah. not even close heck, you know, right now. Stanley Cup Finals about to start. You have Sergey Bobrovsky and Aiden Hill <laughs> starting. I mean, yeah. if you predicted that before the season starts, step forward, please. Seriously, step forward, especially with how Sergei Bobrovsky was not good during the regular season, and now he's gone on this ridiculously <clears throat> historic heater. That just goes to show how weird the position is. Aiden Hill, he's a journeyman. Now he's starting in the Stanley Cup final. So sometimes you don't need that elite level guy, but you still need to have someone at least playing at least average to above average. And both Hill and especially Bobrovsky have been playing at a very high level during these playoffs. It, it is the most important position to have going into a playoff run. And the Penguins have sadly not had that for the last few years. I think Dubas took a bit of a risk with the Samsonov and Murray thing. I wouldn't, you know, go after either one of them if I was him. The, the thing with the goalie class is it's not good. Jari is arguably the best option available. Obviously Aiden Hill is out there, but you'll have to see if, you know, who knows how, if he's priced himself, himself out of Pittsburgh. You have Semyon Varlamov. Okay. Frederick Anderson, not bad, but he's also injury prone like Jari. 
my, my eye is set on maybe offer shooting Jeremy Swayman from Boston because I think they have a cap crunch coming there. And if they want to commit to Linus Olmark, who had a historic season, they don't know if they'll have room to sign Swayman. I, I would be very interested to get him. You could also look to the trade market. If you really want to be bold, go out and get Connor Hellebuck, UC Soros. Those are two of the best goaltenders in the league. I think Hellebuck is probably more likely because the Predators just uh, hired Andrew Burnett. And I think they're going to try to win next season, especially with how Barry Trotz was talking during his press conference. So, you know, one of them, probably it's going to be Hellebuck is more likely. That would also be good. But that's still the big question I have heading into next season. Even if you bring Jari back, and that's still a possibility, you can't bring back to Smith. You can't do that tandem back for what? A fourth <laughs> straight season, I think, at this rate. You have to go out and yeah. get someone like a 1B option. Watch me. <laughs> hey, the, hey, it's never been bangers. Kyle Dubas is the one to decide to run it back. So it's only his first try with that tandem. Uh no, but uh Hunter, did you see we talked about it last week? Did you see that projected contract by chance for Tristan Jari? I believe it was the evolving twins that had it, and I believe it was six years times six point eight eight, if my math is correct. And that yeah. is a hard pass. Yeah, maybe that's the one I'm talking myself. about. That's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I think I touched that on my show last week. I, I wasn't sure which uh, analytics site it was from. Glad I got that <laughs> right. Yeah, no thanks. Um, yeah, that's that's a tough one. To, but but again, like to your point about the goalie market, I mean, that's that's more of a product of the market than it is Jari. So I mean, yeah, I'm not touching that. I I don't know, you know, where they pivot to, but you can't do that. Like if you're bringing Jari back, it's on a you know, buy low, prove it to us. You got to stay healthy for the full season, like type of thing. And, and to your, uh, another point that you made there with running it back, it, you got to move the Smith also, if you're bringing back Tristan Jari, like there's no way to sell that duo to the, to the fan base again. No, I mean, there, there's absolutely no way, you know, that that'll be strike one for Kyle. Uh, if he somehow brought that tandem back for what would, what would be again, a fourth straight season, just Smith uh, had a, okay year a bit inconsistent played well at the world championships until the last couple of minutes of the last two games where he let in a couple of bad squeakers but if you're bringing jari back even if it's on like a two-year 3.5 million per 4 million per kind of deal you got to get someone in there that can start at least half the season because to smith the more he plays the worse he plays because it, there were so many times this past season right he had a few good starts in a row. It's like, okay, it looks like he could really take this thing and run with it because Jari was so banged up. Nope. Had a couple of bad starts in a row. They go back to Jari. Oh, he's going to do it again. A couple of really good starts. Oh, has another bad one. They go back to Jari. He just can't play that many games. I believe he played 38 games this season. That's the most he's ever played in his NHL career. He's a backup. That's all he is. But you know, even at 1.8 million, you bring back Jari – that, that, I'm sorry, you, you can't sell that tandem with how banged up they are. Here's how it's going to happen. The Dubas is going to give Jari the contract on the same day that he's going to buy out Granlin. That way <laughs> fans have no idea that they gave Jari a contract and they won't care until they actually find out the next day. Because everybody's going to be so focused. It on reminds me of uh, when you when you said that. I don't know why it was reminded me of like how Danny was describing the scene when Hextall got asked about um, dang it, who was the player that like it is oh Johan Larson last year. It like leaked that they were signing Johan Larson or whatever, and Danny asked him about it, and Hextall was like completely thrown off. He's like, I don't know where you got that from, but we did sign Josh Josh Archibald. <laughs> And he had that awful <laughs> smirk on his face. Like, he was just like... But I just picture it like, but we did sign Josh Archibald. <laughs> and, like, just waiting for everybody's positive reactions or something. But, um, the, yeah, so I'm picturing, like, he's going to be like, all right, we did sign Tristan Jari. Like, yeah, we did We did do that. But we also bought out Mikhail Granlund. You know, that, that might be Thoughts? a wash at that point. <laughs> And speaking of Mikhail Granlin, that should be the first move he makes, by the way. I'm surprised it's out. not done already. <laughs> I mean, he's been on he's been on the job for what eight hours? It's yeah, not he's done. Slacking. He's Listen, slacking. I, I, he, Put he's that two right and six now. year old to sleep and let's get on the phone <laughs> with Mikhail's agent. Also, by the way, know. speaking of Danny, because he's been brought up several times, I wanted to point out specifically on this show that in the press conference, 
he was the only reporter, I'm pretty sure, that was not mentioned by name by Kyle Dubas. Because every single time he would thank the he would thank the people for the question. And Danny's question was the only one. So a common we, Danny uh, L, by the I, way. I just want to mention too, um, you know, fake media. So obviously, you know, none of us were at the press conference. But uh I do just want to mention too, like I even even as somebody that's not a reporter had an appreciation for just the way that Kyle conducted the whole thing. And even like you were just mentioned right there, like those small details saying the reporter's name back to them when addressing and answering their questions. Like I, obviously that doesn't translate to results on the ice, but today was just, you know, a huge, like you mentioned Hunter, how that could be strike one. If you bring back Jari. well so far like batting a thousand based off this press conference. Strike one if he brings back the tandem overall. Not not oh, just tandem jump, overall. Not, not tandem jump. overall. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, he it's I think it's easy to win press conferences. I think it's hard to just blow everyone away and want people to run through a wall for you because I think every Penguins fan around the world right now wants to run through a wall for this guy. And I tweeted this today. I think this is the happiest the fan base has been outside of re-signing 71 and 58 since 2017 when they won the Stanley Cup. I actually can't think of another occasion where they were this happy maybe jake gensel scoring four goals against the flyers in game six 2018 maybe put that up there otherwise this, this is this is a tremendous day for the organization you finally have someone in there who's forward thinking enough of the dinosaur you know hockey operations people in your front office he was great during that presser you said it smitty just even just re- repeating some of the reporters' names back to them just being very courteous, uh, except stop, Danny, everybody but one. Not yeah, me. everyone except Danny, who's fake media like me. But, you know, you have that. You had him talking about the back end, goaltending, trying to get more forward depth. You had the money quote of him saying, if you want to bet against Sidney Crosby, Mike Sullivan, Evgeny Malkin, Chris my back. Yeah, go, you can do that. <laughs> I mean, that has people run, ready to run through a wall. I thought he aced. Honestly, every answer talking about what he wants in his new GM front office, how he wants to win now, but also build this organization for the future because the rebuild is coming. Everything about that presser was handled beautifully. And you know, now the now the fun, but also the hard part begins because you know, we've alluded to it many times. Ron Hextall left a pretty massive mess for him to clean up. Yeah, I'm not gonna yes. lie. Dur- during l- during the press conference, I was aroused. I mean, listening to him talk about data, uh, having a GM talking about data and and using analytics in hockey decisions. And I mean, the way that he talked about it too, because I think that appeased both sides of whatever. I don't even know if there's an argument about analytics, but I feel like there's like a an un, unwritten un- argument about analytics between people who hate them and people who love them. It's all either all or nothing. I think he appeased both sides where like, he grew up in the more traditional hockey, like hockey sense of like, this is like how you develop players and everything. But as he became more of the, the, the GM side of it, he, he developed that skill of using the data and how it does bring value towards building teams and, and how it brings value on the ice as well. And I, I think he, he, he said that perfectly on, I, I mean, also, if you're a if you're a player that was on the bottom six or whatever, whenever he was he said he was addressing like the type of player, he's like, we're gonna want want people that are competitive, but also good. And if you're oh, in the man. bottom six of the penguin, you're just like <laughs> what, what, he's talking about us. We uh, outside, outside of Jeff Carter, who is gonna be here because of contract reasons. For, yeah. Because of contract. Hey, has anybody asked Taylor if he can be sent down yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to I'll ask her. Um you know what's interesting? Somebody brought up a player to us um, when we tweeted out about having you on and looking for some topics. So obviously, like, Granlin's going to be one of the first piece of business to take care of. Got to figure out the goaltending situation. But another pending UFA in Jason Zucker, who's over that 30-year-old threshold, uh, obviously coming off the season that he just had. He's an interesting one, and it's it's a tough one. You know, obviously, like, a new front office with no ties to him. Um, but I think, you know, the locker room would is, is going to be much better place if Jason Zucker is here. I think a lot of the guys would like to have him back. They obviously don't get to make that decision. There's obviously a certain number of years that you probably don't want to go past as well as money. You don't want to throw a bunch of money at a guy that just had, you know, maybe the second or third best season of his career um, is, for, is 
guys often injure him as well. I, I mean, like I just keep going back and forth with it. But Hunter, uh, you you've probably touched on this several times on your show uh, with Jason Zucker. But where are you at with Jason Zucker? And is he somebody that like you have very strict parameters on, but would bring back? Or where are you at? Yeah, I was actually surprised that he wasn't asked about Zucker today. And I get it. You have a lot of topics to. to yeah, what the hell, Danny? You have a lot of topics to be asked about during an introductory press conference. But, you know, I mean, if I was there, I probably would have stuck in a question about him because I do think he is arguably their most important pending free agent. They haven't started contract negotiations with him. He has expressed a big desire to come back to the Penguins. And I mean, I assume Kyle is probably going to reach out to his agent in the next week or something to. You know, figure something out, like see what his asking price is and that. For me, I would give him short term, but a higher number, maybe like two years. It's tough. Two, three years, five million per, maybe a little less. I, 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 the sweet spot for me would be like 4.5. So, million. okay. When you said higher number, I thought you meant higher than what he was currently making. No, and I no, was like, no, no, no. uh, <laughs> I, and, I, and I don't know. I think he would take a discount to come back because I think he likes the, the city of Pittsburgh and the Penguins so much. I just, you can't pay him 5.5 million or even higher than that with this yeah. next contract, because can you really be sure that he's going to have a year like this again with his injuries? He's over 30, the aging curve, all that. You have to take that into consideration, right? So if I were Kyle, you know, I would give him just a short-term offer, offer two to three years, maybe 4.5 to 5 million. If that doesn't do it, then I think he kind of got to say, hey, I'm not going to go higher than that. You can probably go out and get yourself a lot of term and a lot more money on the free agent market because I think he will, you know, premium <clears throat> top six one winners GM. like, what did yeah. you say? I said it only takes one GM, you know, to to throw a six year deal at him like the Penguins were throwing around last off season. So Vince Trocheck got like a seven year term last year. I mean, yeah. th th this th people throw term out there like it's nothing. So I don't know if Zucker would get that long, but I do think he would get four, or five, maybe even six years from a team, as you said, Smitty. It only takes one. Top, he's a top six winger. He would get paid handsomely by whoever gets him. That's just going to be a tough negotiation because I think there's going to be a certain price that Kyle will want it to be at and his agent might and the Zucker's agent may want it to be higher. I just don't think the Penguins can do that. Because even though they have a lot of cap space, you have to make sure you use it wisely. If he does walk and there's a decent chance that he will, you're gonna have to figure out his replacement either via trade, I think. Free agency, there's not as many options out there. There is Tyler Bertuzzi who would be awesome. He's a total pest. A very I, I compare him to be a very, very mini version of Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk is obviously a, in his own league. <laughs> yeah. Unreal player. Mm -hmm. Tyler Bertuzzi, well below, but still kind of a similar type player to him. Someone who can score, put someone who can pass very well, get under someone's skin. I would like that. But if you can't get someone like him, I think you're going to have to go out onto the trade market and try to get Zucker's replacement. So that that's a tough call right now. But again, guys, two, three years, 4.5 to five. That's my, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I, we, we've done, you know, we've talked about years and, and numbers. I think we were relatively in the same ballpark, to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, it is going to be. I, I do like Bertuzzi, though. I, I think that's worth a shot, even if he won't take one. Um, nobody. <laughs> All right, good. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, no, but I do like Bertuzzi's game quite a bit. So that would be an interesting, you know, Zucker replacement. I, but what what do you think he would get, though, on the market as well? Tyler Bertuzzi, uh, he, yeah, he's more. going to get quite a bit. Yeah. Go ahead, Tyler. Sorry. Oh, no. I, I just, he, he's going to get How old more. is he? How old is he? 28. I think I believe I he's at it. 27, 28. He was a rental for, of course, he was a rental for Boston. He he was awesome for them. He's going to get a lot of term, and he's probably going to get over $6 million per season. Dubas kind of hinted at them making a splash. Yeah, they're saying his projection is uh, six years, 5.25. Close enough. Yeah. That's a good cap hit. I would do the agency, cap hit. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets six. I mean, people overspend. But and in, in the years, he's probably gonna get six or seven because he's young enough. So mm -hmm. this I, other I, one I, has um four years, five point four two. This other projection. And that's the one that actually that was quoted in Taylor's or Danny's article about potential free agents. I mean, I, I'd sign up for that. That one, that yeah. one's nice. Yeah, four years. Four years, 5.42. Yeah. I mean, shoot, round it up, 5.5. 5. 
<laughs> four he, years, he I think I'd be good. Be a fan favorite in one game. Like, legit. Yeah. He, 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 I mean, I think he is a better player than Zucker. If you want to upgrade over him in free agency, that's the guy you want to go after. As I was saying just a couple of seconds earlier, I, I think Dubis hinted at them making a splash at, at, in some capacity in free agency because he mentioned that they do, they do have $20 million in cap space. Also, Kyle, as we've alluded to, it'll be $24 million if you buy out Mikhail Granlund. So you have even more money to go out there and make a splash. But you know he would certainly qualify. 5.5 and give him a day off to let him storm the capital. I think it's a great situation for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's allowed in Canada now. Um, I, I think if you want Zucker back, though, you're really selling him on you're going to win a cup in the next two years. And that that's what you should be selling him on. And no, no, don't overpay. Like, I think, Hunter, I think you're right. And that's pretty much the same numbers we were saying, like two to three years. Two years, preferably three years max. And you would like it sub five. If it has to be five, then if it's two years, I can live with it. But you're really selling him on, hey, we're we're going to win a Stanley Cup in the next two years. And that's how you get him to sign a contract like that. Otherwise, I mean, I know, I no hard feelings to Zucker if he wants to leave for more money. This is pretty much the last big contract he's going to get at the age he has. So I don't blame somebody yeah. like that for wanting to cash out. Absolutely. Um, we kind of started to touch on some potential names here down the board in terms of his staff when we were talking about uh, who a potential GM could be. But just in terms of like filling out the staff besides that, I know we, we mentioned Jason Spezza, who we expect to come on in some role for the organization. Like you said, whether that's as a Penguins employee or technically Fenway Sports Group. But like, are there other names that you've considered, not necessarily for GM, but just in terms of filling out a staff? <sighs> I haven't fully considered, you know, I mean, outside of Jason Spezza, yeah. I think that's really the only one I've considered it like just around Kyle Dubas. I forget his name. I'm going to wish I did not because I had it about right before I was recording. The Maple Leafs guy who's running the draft right now, he is a big Kyle Dubas guy. I'm trying, you can probably look up his name. Um, Kiprios and Born were talking about it on Sportsnet today. They think he could also go with Dubas to pittsburgh he mm. he's running their whole draft and he's like he's also one of kyle's right hand man um last he's name starts with, with what was that i'm trying to find it but yeah last name might start i think my his last name might be west or something like that i i forget but i i you if you Jerry told me the name, i would recognize it i can't find anything same Anything I anything I search for the Leafs now, it's it's just of uh, of uh, Treleving. What do we think about that hire? By the way, I know this isn't a Maple Leafs podcast, but we did get a question kind of about that. Someone asked, did they delay this announcement just to oh. rain on the Leafs parade? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They did. Would... <laughs> Cal <laughs> Duba and not. Era wasted. Steve Dangle. I think didn't Steve Dangle tweet about like I got it West that uh, West Clark that's okay. him that's what I was that's a Kyle about. Dubis guy he's their um director of amateur scouting assistant director of player personnel he's running their whole draft mm, okay interesting so so what, what role would you see that could, though Kiprios and Bormer thinking he could come over with uh, Dubis he they were they it was funny they were doing their segment and they were like. You nope, you nope, you nope, you you come with me, you come with me. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because obviously well, he's gonna no. coach people from Toronto, and I wouldn't be surprised if yeah uh Wes Clark is one of them. I wouldn't mind if if Pridham got the GM and if they, they took I wouldn't mind if they took a ste- more Steelers approach to it, how they how the Steelers are in their front office right now, where you have like Andy Weidel who came from Philadelphia that is more of like the player personnel guy. And then you have Omar Khan, who is the contract and cap wizard guy. Like, I, w- I wouldn't mind if you had Brandon Pridham come in and be more so just like the, the contractual cap sort of GM where you're just running everything from a financial standpoint. And you have Kyle Dubas basically making all the personnel decisions. I think that could be smart. Well, if you listen to in that way, you don't have two different minds trying to trying to figure out for the same team. You just basically say, say Kyle, you're you're running everything from personnel standpoint. 
I'll handle all the finance. The Avalanche kind of do something like that with Joe Sackick and Chris McFarland because Sackick was the GM before they promoted him to president of Hockey Ops, and McFarland is the one that kind of makes the trades while Sackick is just there to support him and just talk with him through the decisions. I could I could see something like that. It is going to be curious to see like the balance of power because is it going to be like a team effort or – I mean, I don't think obviously Dubas is not going to be like Brian Burke who just meets with season ticket holders as the president of hockey operations. But I'll be curious to see like who has the final say in terms of, oh, I'm going to, I want to sign this guy or I want to trade for this guy. Is it going to be the guy below him or is it going to be Dubas that says, okay, you can do this? Or is it just going to be like, you know, a collaborative that's, group? That that's why I think I would prefer it if the guy that you bring in for GM isn't, obviously he's going to be on the hockey world, but like he's not a, a hockey personnel type of guy. I would prefer it to be more of the finance type of guy and and just say, Kyle, you are running the team from a personnel standpoint. Because I feel like if you bring in another guy, especially another analytical guy, you could have conflicting, like between Kyle and whoever they would bring in. You could have con- conflicting opinions on players that they should bring in. And then you get into the standpoint that you're talking about, like who's actually running the team. I, I, th- I think it's a safer bet to just say, you are running all personnel decisions. And then find a guy to handle all the contracts and all the well. That's putting, that's putting the, that's yeah. him. Yeah. I, I I think that, that that's a smart way to run it because as we mentioned the last time we, we had two heads and we still don't know what kind of hockey team they were trying to build and what kind of players they actually liked. I mean, mm-hmm. I I have an idea of what Brian Burke actually liked and what idea what actually no, I have no idea what Ron Hextall actually likes because he traded for Mikhail Graham. But I can't I can't say whatever I, Pryor I know. tells him to trade for. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I think it's it is a, a much safer approach and probably a cleaner approach to running the team if you just have one guy that's over the actual personnel and and developmental of, of all the players. Well, when Kyle was talking about what they're looking for, like it almost sounded like what you're saying, like it was kind of like I'm gonna look for a guy that kind of tr- contrasts what I do, like. I you have to recognize strengths and weaknesses, and he's looking for somebody that brings something to the something to the table that he knows he doesn't offer. So that that's kind of what you're saying. You know, he's looking for that that peanut butter to his jelly, his yin to his yang, his salt to his pepper. I say there's multiple ways you can go with contrast. You could have contrast where he just doesn't do what I do, and he's more the financial side, like what we're talking about. And then you could have a contrast where you hire like Don Cherry and. You, you have a complete opposite. <laughs> if you really want to contrast, you hire Hunter Hodes, as I've been pitching. You, you want an even bigger contrast, you go hire Peter Shrelly or Mark Bergman for being oh your general God. manager. Man, I can't believe those names are even mentioned in, in interviews. I mean, I, did I, you see that Steve Dangle was saying that that was like Bergman was going to be the – he said Bergman was going to be the GM. Bergman and Chaika, he had heard that yeah. from a birdie, which, that, which literally makes no sense because the way Fenway had been talking, I'm like – that is the, op- I mean, Chaika at least has an analytical background. You can talk about his tenure in Arizona all you want. But mm-hmm. I was like, first of all, like that goes against like what. It Fenway also seemed is. like he was rolled out after the first round of it. He was. Yeah. So I don't know where that was coming yeah. from. And also speaking of Fenway Sports Group, I think it's time everyone owes them an apology. I don't want to hear about absentee ownership. Ever including again, us. <laughs> including <laughs> us on the show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll, we'll wait and see. All right. No, no, they, they've obviously been very involved in this process. Can they put the logo in their banner, at least, on social media? <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. When they do that, we'll apologize on the show. I was just stunned that I saw Tom Warner and John Henry there today. I'm like, wow, they're actually making legit appearances here. This and is actually a big we, deal. We learned that a lot of the top candidates went to John Henry's house. They they seem to be very involved in this process. They, I mean, yeah. at least to me, I know That's... people say what they will about the ownership group with other teams that they own, but they mm-hmm. seem to have a very keen interest in the penguins potentially maybe even above a couple other teams but they they shifted their interest after liverpool failed to make the champions league for next year so well that's what i'm saying so the interest is obviously there because it's like a very fun time like you got your shiny new toy and stuff but like hopefully they stay invested now yeah obviously because this is going to be a process um who was the other one that i thought uh, i saw here in terms of oh (laughs) this is just a uh jeff said (laughs) Why was I 100% a straight man before the Dubas presser and I'm not anymore? Is it okay to have a man crush on Kyle? I mean, I hope so. Well, as I said, I was aroused when I was listening yeah. to him talk. So I don't I don't think that it's it's negative to to feel that way about Kyle Dubas. It's also the first day of Pride Month. So shout out to everybody that, that observes that. Yes. 
We are absolutely plus, allies on the show. Plus, everybody who it, you, you get an upgrade in the looks department when you go from Ron Hextall to Kyle Dubas. Oh my! And oh in the my age God. department, every, every I mean, you're going aspect. to a you're going from a what a dinosaur to a 37. By the way, I'm clipping that because we like you said that, and then Hunter and I were both like, "Oh my!" Like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, you're getting a 37. Fun fact: Kyle year. Dubas I, is only 12 years older than me. I feel he's younger than Jeff Carter. Weird. What? He's he's he's, he's younger than, than Jeff Carter. He's less than so. ten years older than me. He got his he got his first GM do- job not in the NHL but um at wh- where's he from Sue? So, yeah, Sue. He he got his first GM job. I would have been well, it would have been three years ago for me when he was twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're pathetic. <laughs> we, we, we we literally suck. He's, he's two years <laughs> older than um Crosby, and I think he's only one year older than Gino. Yeah, yeah, and then he got the GM job in, in Toronto when he was 32. Yeah, we'll be there soon. Still recording this podcast, yeah. probably talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fake media. Talking about how it. he just how he brought back Tristan Jari and Casey DeSmith again, running it back for, <laughs> oh, man, he, for the, he does, for the he ninth does, year in a row. <laughs> he does that. He's going off the full pit bridge by fans, I think. For the, for the, the 2027 season of the Penguins. Sidney Crosby was a point per game player again, and we're bringing back Tristan Jari and Casey DeSmith. Tristan Jari failed to play in 60 games still. <laughs> He'll jump off the Fort Pit by popular demand of the fans if that happens. Oh, oh man. man. Was there anything else here to address before? Questions wise? Yeah, I'm looking here. Uh, this isn't a question. Oh, he, uh, he loved Mike Sullivan today. I'll if I, thoughts and prayers to Larry Brooks, guys. Thoughts and prayers to him. I don't like. Was he really the like? Was he where that kind of became a thing? Like, he, was he the one pumping that up, making it seem like this was a possibility? Oh yeah, it was. Okay. It was Larry Brooks the whole time. Molly Walker, who also covers New York Rangers for the New York Post, great reporter by the way. She she does a really good job. Mm-hmm. She actually called Mike and asked him about like, the Rangers job, and he goes, "No, like I am fully committed to the Penguins. I'm not going anywhere." And that was evident today from Kyle Dubas. He called Mike one of the best coaches in the league. He said he could coach forever, and he said he's already had conversations with him about what the team want. He wants the team to look like for next season. So, I know Mike Sullivan had a bit of a rough year, but he is going to be this coach for at least this next season and probably longer. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, I, we we've talked about it in nauseum on here. The coaching deficiencies if you will that we kind of saw it's like yeah like i understand from a roster perspective obviously it could have been a whole lot better but when you talk about the deployment of brian doomlin the deployment of jeff carter some of those situations that are in sullivan's hands those things are also you know the difference between making and missing the postseason so yeah certainly mike sullivan could have done a better job um this last year but i do absolutely still view him as one of the better coaches in hockey he was involved in this process and and getting kyle dubas to pittsburgh so you know whether it was the talk about sullivan going to new york by choice or you know when dubas comes in him wanting to fire him to bring in keith like that was yeah sullivan's going to be involved in the process to get dubas here and then dubas is going to fire him that's how this is going to (laughs) work Yeah, what a what a joke. Sheldon Keith, Sheldon Keith is probably going to stay as a Leafs coach anyway, the way Brad Tree Living was talking today during their uh, press conference. But yeah, I never bought, bought into that. This wasn't going to be like a Dan Bowlesman situation where Jim Rutherford comes in and kind of lets go of a lame duck coach. Mm-hmm. Mike Sullivan is he, – he's staying here. Yeah. I also – like like you mentioned, he called, first off, you know, coming in for Kyle to call Sid, Sid, right off the bat, that was sick. Uh, so, you know, like the two first people that he talked to in Pittsburgh were Sid and Mike Sullivan. So, yeah, I just felt like listening to him talk about it. Very, very secure position right now for Mike Sullivan heading into 2023. Let's talk about a butterfly effect real quick. The sh- Because of the be- Chicago Black Fox. Yeah, I knew this was where this was going. Yeah. Kyle Dubas is the GM of the Pittsburgh <laughs> Penguins. The, the Blackhawks beat the Penguins, knock us out. Well, knock it didn't knock us out, but essentially... Let Florida in. Toronto wanted Florida. Got their asses handed to them. Which fired Dubas. And then the Penguins being knocked out, which Hextall, in my opinion, should have been fired either way, whether they made the playoffs or not. Oh, my gosh. But they w- He would have been fired if they got steamrolled by Boston anyway. Yeah. What if yeah, they would have won the cup? <laughs> the, fir- the first team in the history of the 
history of the NHL to fire their GM after winning a Stanley Cup. So and it funny. all led back to that trade for Mikhail Granlin, who yeah. won, who, who scored the game winning goal. But you think about that game with the Penguins and Blackhawks. The I was there like for you it. said the, the domino effect. You were there. Well, there you go. Anybody yeah. there? There's what happened. There it is, right there. Is your answer for? <laughs> I am I responsible for them getting out of this. Everyone, you can end the show. So, right I mean, there. you're also we, responsible we you for your, thank the you. Florida Panthers playing in the Stanley Cup final and the Blackhawks, the baby. Blackhawk getting a generational talent. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. No, Again, the Florida Panthers are the team of destiny. For that. You know, the, the 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 takes exposed that. when they were down three games to one. I, you know. They're fun. That actually makes me wonder, Hunter, what is your opinion on do you think the NHL has any rigging to who wins the lottery? No, it, it doesn't. It, it, it obviously stinks that the Chicago Blackhawks won it because I don't think they should have been allowed to even participate because I think their pick should have been docked for the whole Kyle Beach situation. But mm-hmm. no, it, it's not rigged or anything like that. They, they do it beforehand. It was funny reading the, the hit pieces from Frank Cervalli and a couple other reporters. They're like, we were there. We saw it happen live and all this other stuff. So that you can put that to bed right there. But I did feel the, the one team I do really feel bad though for the poor Anaheim Ducks second in the Crosby lottery. And then they get second in the Bedar lottery. That poor <laughs> team. If they were the mighty Ducks, I yeah. might feel bad for them, but I don't. Because there's the Anaheim Ducks. And Brian Burke was the executive when they lost the first one. There you go. <laughs> I'll just say, I'm. Oh, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm not in the camp that they always rig it, but I do think they rig it whenever they need to. And I say that because I am firmly in the Why camp. Why did they need to on this one? Well, I don't think they needed to on this one. Oh. Okay. You think I they, think they needed, think they needed, I think to, they needed to Chicago? It. I think they needed to in 2005. I am firmly in the camp that the Penguins, the Penguins were won the Sidney Crosby draft because they were selected to, not because they was random. Because if they didn't do that, the team's gone. Eh. There's times where I'm could it have been the Pirates instead. Can they take the Pirates? Leave the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, serious. I, I, I think that's that, that's that's my. I guess if you if you want to talk about uh what are those things called sports like, conspiracy theories? Well, no, I was gonna say like Bigfoot and and <clears throat> Loch Ness monster. What are those things called? Uh, um, he's like one of those old uncles on Facebook, like urban legends. Urban into legends. the clouds. Yeah, that's that's like my urban legend that I that I have stock in is that the, the, the Penguins won that lottery draft <laughs> because the NHL wanted them to. Um, yeah, I guess my thought process with this. You know, talk about this one though. My thought process with this one would have been kind of tying in with what Hunter said about like how Chicago couldn't have even should have even had this pick. I think like the NHL, if anything, should have been motivated to not have him go to Chicago, like because it's such a a bad look. Like that is right now should be the the bad look. Like the what's it, the the black sheep of the league is the Chicago Blackhawks, or at least it should be. So to have him go there, it just it's a it's a really bad look. I almost wish he pulled like an Eli Manning situation here and was just like, I'm not going to play there. I'm not playing there. I'm yeah. dipping. Didn't that happen in the NHL? Was it Lindros? It was it was Lindros. He yeah. was not going to play for Quebec. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. So there you go. Just there's already a precedent for him to do this. Connor Bedard, who I know listens to this show. <laughs> 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 there's your way out of Chicago. Um, I don't know. I don't think we got anything else our way, at least in regards to this. We've answered everything we got. I'm pretty sure. So do you guys have any, oh wait, somebody else responded to Hunter a couple while we were recording. Okay. Gubis trade signings that must happen. Don't care what has to be done, but these guys need to be in penguin unis next year, whatever it takes. Josh Anderson, uh, that dude that has a weird last name from Montreal. That's a defenseman. Adam Lowry. Excuse me? Luke Shen or Radko Gudis. <laughs> All right. Who I, said I, I'm not even going to answer that question because it's just terrible. Hold on. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, this Is this a – their name is Fansville 412? Yeah. He com- yeah, I don't – I can't. I can't. Is this a, Hold Hunter, on. Is this, is this a troll account? Is this um, – Who is I, the, I, don't, I don't know. 
Who's the dude with the weird last name in Montreal? Uh, Arbor. Oh uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I I can't. How is that pronounced? It's Wait, X did he say it's a, 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 a defenseman? I'm pretty sure he is. I don't. R O. Arbor. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> uh, he is a defenseman, isn't he? Yeah, he he played shutdown men's against Sidney Crosby this year. I know who you're talking about, but I can't pronounce his name either. Six four two thirty eight. Arbor Chicha. Ch- that's how I'd want to say it. You can go on um elite prospects and probably find him and you you can pronounce his name there. This is an that's, awesome show. That's better than what I was gonna do. I was gonna go on YouTube and type in his highlights. You can also do that too. I are, are and let, let me see how the announcer says it. Dakai. There's no way. There's no way it's the Kai. The Kai? Yeah. Remember when you said Denault? That was Herb, not me. Oh, was it Herb? Mm-hmm. So that goes to show how long ago that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were talking about Philip Denault. Philip Denault. All right. Let me, I'm watching a highlight while we're recording so I can listen to this. Name. So you're not interested in those names, Hunter? That was your boy uh, that replied with that. So Luke Shen. I mean, what would we do here? Luke Shen. <laughs> Come on. You know, the how this tweet closes out is this happens. They can compete physically with anyone. Arbor Jackai. I mean, if you want Ron Hextall Jack-Kai. back as your general manager, you can do that. Say hey, the GM man? spot's open right now. <laughs> someone who was a J Fresh that said J-Fresh, yeah. the funniest. Who, yeah. <laughs> Ron, someone someone said Ron Hextall. Someone said Leah Hextall. I'm like, Brendan right, Shanahan. Don't put, don't put Leah Hextall into this. They should request permission to interview Brendan Shanahan. A sick one <laughs> would be Chuck Fletcher from the Flyers. <laughs> oh, they should hire him to fire him. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else? This is a good show. We covered a lot. It's about the same. Hire Amanda normal. Kessel. She joined the uh, the. I think that she joined some front office program for a yeah. team in New York. I believe. Oh. I do think you will see a woman in this front office. I think, I think that's going to be coming. There was a name that was thrown out there. Who was it? Um, Haley, Haley Wickenheiser. I think she's, she's in Toronto right now. Uh, there's one in Seattle. Toronto, Al- 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 Seattle. Al- Seattle's Al- the one Alexander, that I- Manderke, She's also very good. I think you will see a woman in this front office. Very soon, and I think we are not far away from a full time woman general manager that's coming uh, too. I, I need to, it's gonna bug me if I can't figure this out because I saw Amanda I don't even know Kessel, what you're doing anymore. Amanda Kessel oh, Amanda posted Kessel. something about it, um, on her Instagram. Go follow her, by the way. Um, okay. I think it, <laughs> or maybe it's with the Canadians. I don't know. She, she, she is. Doing something in it's like a front office program, so she's getting into, I think, the management side of hockey. Yeah, but that had happened with the Penguins, I thought, before already. So you're saying it's something else now? Yeah, something different now because I saw hmm. her post about it on Instagram. Interesting. I mean, Pittsburgh loves the Kessel, so yeah, I hate that we lost. We lost her to somebody else. You could you could sign Amanda as the GM, and then she could bring back Phil. <laughs> <laughs> who's right now? Who's been healthy scratched for Vegas? Those corpse. All right, Phil. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what Amanda Castle's doing. So I don't know. Anyway. 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 Anything else? I don't know. I'm really grasping at straws right now, trying no, to find I mean, the Amanda Castle thing. Well, I don't think we're finding it. Tyler, maybe he'll hire Lars Mickelson. Who is this? Who? Tyler knows who I'm talking about. I know who he's talking about. <laughs> if I you're love, not, if, love you, inside if you don't like Star Wars, then you're not going to yeah. know. Who. All right. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, uh, Hunter, tell the people where they he's can the find goat. you, find your work, even though you did put already, like, even in your name, Hunter Hodes, LO Penguins. But you can tell the people where they can find you, all your social media platforms, how they can watch or listen to the show, all that good stuff. 
Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. The show's Twitter is LO underscore Penguins, and you can follow the Locked on Penguins podcast wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music now for free there. And also newly announced about a few weeks ago, we are on Sirius XM, the app. Wow. We are not. So we're not. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> so if you're watching or listening to this, it's not on Sirius XM. It would be on YouTube. It is uh, on everywhere Spotify. else that you said, though. Yeah, basically everywhere else. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, where Tyler will randomly post something. And then I'll notice I get a bunch of notifications. Um, all that good stuff. Thanks again to Hunter for joining us this week. Uh, all the links that Tyler mentioned at the beginning of the show will be in the description of this. couple GoFundMes for good cause that we like to support um, as well as our friend Haley's t-shirt shop. She made me this around the 412 one of one shirt as well. So shout out to her. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week uh, to talk about the crowd. Mikhail Something Grandley that Pittsburgh bought sports. out. There you go. There's next week's topic for sure. Uh, but until then, we'll see you.